Okay, enough background stuff. I'm going to get to the stuff that are, the, the material that initially cued me into some of the things that are going on. I'm going to share with you an example of an innovation that worked. And the question is not what was the method, but why did it work? Why did it improve the situation? It's the why bit that the presentation is about. I'm going to tell you about the case of an engineer. It happened to be in engineering that the underlying principles are exactly the same regardless. This, this was at Strathclyde University. There used to be a weekly pattern, this is common in many science and technology subjects, of a lecture in which students are shown how to tackle particular kinds of problems. They give, then give sheets with these kinds of problems on. The students tackle the sheets. The next week they'll turn up to a small class, small in inverted commas, in which they discuss the problems. That, that's the traditional pattern in science and technology. So it isn't lecture seminar, it's lecture problem class, but otherwise it, it's a similar in nature. Um, at Strathclyde, the student numbers went up to such a point that in the past, lectures used to mark, the students used to hand the problem sheets in the day before the problem class, the teacher would go home and mark them all, and they discussed them in the, they, they couldn't afford to mark them anymore, the volume was completely impossible. Um, the problem classes got bigger at the same time. So there used to be six to eight, they became 16 to 20. In a group of 16 to 20, a, a smart student could avoid eye contact and get away with the fact that they hadn't even attempted to tackle the problems. And you had these desultory conversations where most of the students hadn't done the work or enough to have a sensible problem class discussion. So it was not functioning at all well. And the exam marks dropped down to an average of 45%, which meant that lots of students failed the course 40% pass mark. And this was a course that was required for later courses. So unless they reset the course in the exam, they were going to get tripped out of the course. So this is really serious outcome. They hadn't got resources to go back to marking stuff every week. It was just completely impossible. So they thought, well, what are we going to do? And very sensibly, they looked to Australia, where class sizes had gone up a few years before they'd gone up in Britain, and tried to see what they found there. And they came across something and adapted it. And this is what they did. They said, there are about 60 problems. If you look at all the problem sheets we give you, there's about 60 problems. We need to see evidence that you've had a go at 50 of them. And that is, of course, requirement. Unless we can see that evidence, you're not even allowed to sit the exam. There's a course requirement to do with the volume of effort. That's the first thing. The next thing is that the teachers didn't mark these. Six times during the course, the students would come into a big tiered lecture theatre like this. The students would come in with the problems they tackled so far, and they put them on the table, and an administrator would hurriedly sort them into piles, and the piles would be distributed around the room, and the students would sit down, and they'd have a pile of other students' problems in front of them, and they'd have a marking scheme of the kind that if a postgraduate student was being hired to do some cheap marking, they would need some kind of guidance like that to do the marking. They had that. And they would sit down and they would mark it. Now, they didn't do the same kind of a job a teacher would do. A teacher would say, um, Brian, you've had a really good effort at this, but unfortunately, the student would say, Brian, you're moron, you don't do it like this. Because they knew Brian and they knew he was a moron. And they got visceral feedback. Um, some, some of it was completely wrong. Some of it was right, some of it was wrong. Um, it was visceral, it was patchy, they commented on some things, they ignored others, they didn't read the marking instructions properly, all kinds of stuff like that. And they would scroll stuff all over it, cross it out, write comments, and they'd get through the pile as quickly as they could. Um, and as soon as they'd finished, they'd take them down to the front, the administrator would quickly sort them into student piles, you'd pick your own problems up and leave, and several different students would have written comments all over your problems. Everything else stayed the same. So the lectures were the same, same problems as before, same problem classes before, exams are unchanged, 